Hello everybody, this is Refresh and I'm here to bring you a battle between the three Magic the Gathering Clash packs and the Face the Hydra Challenge deck from Theros. Each of the Clash packs have been put into their final form, that is combining the Clash packs into their combined deck list and they are present here. We're going to be playing two games against the Hydra, first on normal difficulty and then on hard mode, we'll be using sideboards in between the games. And then we'll also be using these two hero cards. First we have the Harvester, which says tap, draw a card, then discard a card. And then the Warrior, which says tap, target creature you control, gains haste until end of turn. Because I only have one copy of each of these cards, we'll be applying their use to all three decks simultaneously. Go ahead and get started by drawing our opening hands. Fate and Fury draws a Curious Follower. Forest, Karametra's Acolyte, Corsair of Crufix, Font of Fertility, Forest, and Hydra Broodmaster. It's not a great start because we don't have any islands, but I think because we can cast the Font of Fertility and get the lands that we need, and then we have the Corsair of Crufix coming shortly thereafter, it is a reasonable first hand. Param Prophet draws a Forest, Jungle Hollow, Brain Maggot, Iolano Blossoms, Debilitating Injury, Opulent Palace, and Forest. This has kind of nothing to do with their early hands, and so we are going to mulligan this. Because this is multiplayer, we get one free mulligan. Now we have a Swamp, a Forest, a Sulte Charm, Opulent Palace, Forest, Doomwake Giant, and Corsair of Crufix. This is also not a great hand, but because we can cast Corsair on three, we have a Sulte Charm if we need to use it to uh, pitch cards. I think we can keep this. Armed and Dangerous draws an offensive Kintree Spirit, Plains, Forest, Valorous Stance, Citadel, Castellan, Siege Rhino, and Plains. I think we keep this just on the power of an offensive Kintree Spirit, and we'll start from there. Because this is multiplayer, we'll all draw on our opening turn. Fade and Fury draws a Nessian Game Warden. Power and Profit draws a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws Kithian's Irregulars. For the first turn, Fade and Fury will play the Forest. We'll tap it, we'll cast the Font of Fertility. This is an enchantment. For one in the green, you can sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Power and Profit will play an Opulent Palace. It is a land, and just battlefield, tap, you can tap for black, green, or blue. Armed and Dangerous will play the Plains. We'll pass the turn to the Hydra. The Hydra casts the topmost card, which is a Noxious Hydra Breath. It's sorcery, it says choose one noxious hydra breath, deals five damage to each player, or destroy each tapped non-head creature. We'll go ahead and choose to destroy each tapped non-head creature, since that has basically no effect on us. And we'll take three damage from the assembled heads to go down to 17 each. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws a Jace's Ingenuity, and we will discard the Jace's Ingenuity. Power and Profit draws a Nemesis of Mortals, and we will discard a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws a Cash Defenses, and we will discard the Cash Defenses. We'll untap. Fade and Fury draws a Nessian Corsair. Power and Profit draws a Nix Weaver. Armed and Dangerous draws a Scoured Barons. Fade and Fury will play the Forest. We will tap both of these and sacrifice the Font of Fertility to go searching for an island. We'll put it on the battlefield, tapped, and then we'll shuffle. Power and Profit will play a Forest. Armed and Dangerous will play a Plains. We'll tap the Plains and then cast Anafenza Kintree Spirit. This is a 2-2 Legendary Spirit Soldier. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, bolster one. There's no point to attacking now, so we'll pass the turn to the Hydra. The Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is Hydra's Impenetrable Hide Sorcery. Each head gains indestructible until the end of Hydra's next turn. We'll take three damage each to go down to 14 apiece. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws a Force, and we will discard the Curious Follower. Power and Profit draws a Forest. We will discard the Sultai Charm. Armed and Dangerous draws a Feet of Resistance. We'll discard the Feet of Resistance. We'll untap. Fate and Fury draws a Horizon Chimera. Power and Profit draws a Forest. Armed and Dangerous draws a Forest. Fate and Fury plays a Forest. And we're going to hold for now to cast a Horizon Chimera on the end step of the Hydra's turn. Power and Profit will play a Forest. We'll tap out. Cast the Nyx Weaver. 
This is a 2-3 enchantment spider with reach at the beginning of your upkeep. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. You can pay one green and black to exile it to return to our card from your graveyard to your hand. Armed and Dangerous will play a forest. We'll tap three mana and cast the Citadel Castellan. This is a 2-3 human knight with vigilance and renown two. And because a non token creature entered the battlefield, Anna Fenza will bolster one, giving herself a counter. There's no point in attacking at this point because of the impenetrable hide, so we'll go ahead and pass the turn to the Hydra. The Hydra will cast the topmost card. This is Disorienting Glower. Sorcery, players can't cast spells until the Hydra's next turn. While that is on the stack, Fate and Fury will tap out and cast the Horizon Chimera. This is a 3-2 Chimera with Flash, Flying, and Trample, and whenever you would draw a card, you gain one life. Disorienting Glower resolves, and each player will take three more damage to go to 11 each. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws a Horizon Chimera, and we will discard the Nessian Courser. Power and Prophet draws a Disabilitating Injury, and we'll discard the Debilitating Injury. Armed and Dangerous draws an ultimate price, and we'll discard the ultimate price. We'll untap. On the upkeep, Power and Prophet will mill two. They mill a Jungle Hollow and a Brain Maggot. Fade and Fury draws a Prophet of Crufix. Power and Prophet draws a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws a Dragon Hunter. Power and Prophet will play a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous will play the Scoured Barons. It's a land that enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain one life. You can tap it for white or black. We'll get a life to go back up to 12. Because we drew a card with the Horizon Chimera, Fate and Fury should also go up to 12. And then we will go to combat. We can't cast anything because of the Disorienting Glower, so we will swing with the Horizon Chimera at a Hydra Head. Power and Prophet will send the Nyx Weaver at another Hydra Head. Armed Nadris will send the Citadel Castellan at the Hydra Head that the Nyx Weaver is attacking, and Anna Fenza at the third Hydra Head. This defeats all three heads. And the heads are zero three heads, and when it leaves the battlefield, each player gains two life. We gain six life apiece, but first we'll reveal six cards to see if there are any new heads. We have a ravenous brute head. This is a zero six elite head, and when it leaves the battlefield, each player gains two life and draws a card. We also have two regular hydra heads. Fade and Fury and Armed and Dangerous will go up to 18, while Power and Profit will go up to 17. The Citadel Castellan will get Renown becoming a 4 or 5, and no longer able to cast anything, we will pass the turn to the Hydra. The Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is another Disorienting Glower. While the Disorienting Glower is on the stack, we'll go ahead and tap 4 mana to cast another Horizon Chimera. And then Disorienting Glower resolves, we cannot cast anything any further. We'll take 4 damage from the heads to go down to 14 for our Fate and Fury and Armed and Dangerous, and 13 for Power and Profit. At the end of the Hydra's turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws an Elvish Mystic, and we will discard the Elvish Mystic. Power and Prophet draws a Sultai Charm, and we'll discard the Salty Charm. Armed and Nidris draws a Plains, and we'll discard the Plains. We'll untap. On upkeep, Power and Prophet will mill two. We mill a Jungle Hollow and a Santa Wayfinder. Fade and Fury draws an island. We'll gain four more life from the drawn cards because the Horizon Chimera to go up to 18. Power and Prophet draws a Font of Fertility. Armed and Dangerous draws a Forest. Fade and Fury plays an island. Power and Prophet plays a Forest. Armed and Dangerous plays a Forest. Since we can cast no more creatures, we're going to swing the two Horizon Chimeras into each of the Hydra Heads. The Nyx Weaver will attack the Ravenous Brutehead. The Citadel Castellan will attack the Ravenous Brutehead. This defeats all three heads. We'll gain six life apiece and draw one card each, but first we'll reveal six cards to see if there are any new heads. There's one new Hydra head. Fade and Fury will go up to 24. Power and Profit will go up to 19. Armed and Dangerous will go up to 20. Fade and Fury draws a Curse of the Swine. We'll gain another life to go up to 25. Power and Profit draws a Forest. Armed and Dangerous draws a Dromoka the Eternal. Unable to cast anything else, we'll pass the turn to the Hydra. Disorienting Glower finishes its effect and we'll cast the topmost card, which is a Snapping Fang Head. It's a 0 8 Elite Head. At the beginning of the Hydra's end step, Snapping Fang Head deals 1 damage to each player. When it leaves the battlefield, each player gains 4 life and draws a card. With the Disorienting Glower no longer in effect, Armed and Dangerous will tap 2 mana and cast Valorous Stance. This is an instant. It says choose 1, target creature gains indestructible until end of turn, or 
destroy target creature with toughness four or greater, we'll go ahead and destroy the snapping fang head. The snapping fang head dies, we'll reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. No new heads. We'll each gain four life, bringing Fate and Fury up to 29, Power and Profit up to 23, and Armed and Dangerous up to 24. Fate and Fury will draw a forest, we'll gain a life to go up to 30. Power and Profit draw as an Involving Wilds. Armed and Dangerous draws a Windswept Teeth. We'll take one damage from the head to go down to 29 for Fate and Fury, 22 for Power and Profit, and 23 for Armed and Dangerous. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws an Elvish Mystic, and we will discard the Curse of the Swine. Power and Profit draws a Forest, we'll discard the Evolving Wilds. Armed and Dangerous draws a Jungle Hollow, we will discard the Dragon Hunter. We'll untap. On upkeep, the Nyx Weaver mills two. We mill a Murderer's Cut and a Commune with the Gods. Fate and Fury should have gained two life from that card draw to go up to 31. Fate and Fury draws a Nessian Game Warden. Power and Profit draws a Sultai Soothsayer. Armed and Dangerous draws a Blossoming Sands. Fate and Fury should have gained two life from that card draw to go up to 33. Before we do anything else, we'll attack with the Citadel Castellan into the Hydra Head, since this could be the very last turn. Hydra will die. We'll reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. There's one new Hydra Head. Fate and Fury will play a Forest. Fate and Fury will spend three mana and cast the Courser of Crufix. This is a 2-4 Enchantment Centaur. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You can play the top card of your library if it's a land. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you gain one life. We'll reveal the top card, which is a Temple of Mystery. We'll go ahead and play that Temple of Mystery. This land that enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, scry one. We'll already reveal the next card, and then we will keep the Prognostic Sphinx on top. We'll gain a life from playing the land to go up to 34, and then we'll spend one more mana to cast an Elvish Mystic. This is a 1-1 Elf Druid, and you can tap it for green. Power and Profit will spend 3 mana to also cast a Courser of Crufix. We'll reveal the top card, which is a Scuttling Doom Engine. Then we will play a Swamp. We'll spend 1 mana to cast the Font of Fertility. And then we will immediately crack the Font of Fertility to go searching for a land. We'll take an Island and we'll put it onto the battlefield tapped. We'll shuffle. We should have each gained 3 life from those header heads, so Fate and Fury will go up to 37. Power and Profit will go up to 25. Armed and Dangerous will go up to 26. Armed and Dangerous will play a Blossoming Sands. It's landed into the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield you gain 1 life, and you can tap for green and white. We'll gain a life to go up to 27. We'll tap 5 mana, and cast Dromoka the Eternal. This is a 5-5 legendary dragon with flying, and whenever a dragon you control attacks, bolster 2. And because it entered the battlefield, we'll bolster. That will cause Anafenza to gain another counter. We'll pass to the Hydra. The Hydra casts a topmost card, which is grown for the stump. Put exactly two cards named Hydra Head onto the battlefield from the Hydra's graveyard. If you can't reveal cards from the top of the Hydra's library until you reveal a head card, put that card onto the battlefield and the rest into the Hydra's graveyard. Go ahead and grab a couple of Hydra Heads. Then we'll go to the end step, and Hydra will deal 3 damage to each player, taking Fate and Fury down to 34, Power and Profit down to 22, and Armed and Dangerous down to 24. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws the Prognostic Sphinx, and we'll discard a Nessian Game Warden. Because we drew a card, we'll gain 2 life to go up to 36. Power and Profit draws a Monastery Siege, and we will discard the Forest. Armed and Dangerous draws an Avatar of the Resolute. We'll discard the Windswept Teeth. We'll untap. Fate and Fury draws the Caramatris Acolyte. We'll gain 2 life to go up to 38. And we reveal an Essian Game Warden. Pound Prophet draws a Night Howler. Reveal a Nyx Weaver. Armed and Dangerous draws a Seeker of the Way. Again, we go to combat and we'll attack the Hydra Heads with the Horizon Chimera, the Citadel Castellan, and Dromok of the Eternal, which will bolster two, putting two more counters on Anathenza. This defeats the three Hydra Heads. We'll reveal six cards to see if there are any new heads. There's a Ravenous Brute Head and a regular Hydra Head. 
will each gain 6 life. Fade Fury will go up to 44. Power and Profit goes up to 28. Armed and Dangerous goes up to 30. Fade Fury will play the Forest. We'll spend 5 mana and cast the Prophet of Crufix. This is a 2-3 Human Wizard. Untap all creatures and lands you control. During each other player's untap step, you may cast creature cards as though they had flash. Prime and Prophet will play a forest. We'll spend five mana to cast the Doomwake Giant. It's a 4-6 enchantment giant, and whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So the Hydra is minus one, minus one. Armed and Dangerous will play the Jungle Hollow. It's a land enters the battlefield tapped. When it's the battlefield, you gain one life. You can tap for black and green. We'll gain a life to go up to 31. We'll spend four mana to cast a Siege Rhino. This is a 4-5 Rhino with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses three life, and you gain three life. We'll redirect the life loss into the Hydra Head, defeating it. Reveal two cards to see if there aren't any new heads. There's one Ravenous Brute Head. Go ahead and gain two life apiece to go up to... 46 for Fate and Fury, 30 for Power and Profit, and 33 for Armed and Dangerous. And we'll spend two more mana to cast Seeker of the Way. This is a 2-2 Human Warrior with Prowess, and whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gains lifelink until end of turn. We'll pass to the Hydra. We'll untap Fate and Fury. The Hydra will cast the topmost card. This is a Distract the Hydra. Each player may sacrifice a creature. Each player who sacrifices a creature this way chooses ahead and taps it. Each player who didn't loses three life. Go ahead and lose the life because it's not really a big deal at this point. Fane Fury goes down to 33. Power and Profit goes down to 27. Armed and Dangerous goes down to 30. And then we'll be taking an additional four damage each, bringing Fate and Fury down to 39. Power and Profit will go down to 23. Armed and Dangerous will go down to 26. Using the Flash ability, we will tap out for Fate and Fury. And we'll cast two Karametris Acolytes. These are 1-4 Human Druids. You can tap them to add any amount of green to your mana pool equal to your devotion to green. And then we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws the Nessian Game Warden. We'll reveal the next card, which is an island, and we will discard the Nessian Game Warden. We'll gain two life to go back up to 41. Power and Profit draws the Nyxweaver. We'll reveal the next card, which is an Evolving Wilds. We'll discard the Monastery Siege. Armed and Dangerous draws an Incremental Growth, and we'll discard the Forest. We'll untap. It's upkeep, we'll mill the Evolving Wilds and the Acropolis Fiend, and then we will reveal an island. Fade and Fury draws the island, reveals a Cura's Follower. Power and Prophet draws the island, reveals a Murderer's Cut. Armed and Dangerous draws a Blossoming Sands. Fade and Fury will gain two life to go up to 43. We'll again go to combat. Citadel Castellan will attack. And so will Dromoka, each into an individual creature. Dromoka's attack will give the Seeker of the Way a pair of counters. This will bring the Ravenous Brute Heads down to one and two life toughness apiece. We'll throw in the Nyxweaver at the two toughness Ravenous Brute Head, and the Elvish Mystic at the one toughness Ravenous Brute Head. This will defeat both Ravenous Brute Heads. We'll reveal four cards to see if there are any new heads. Now we have a Shrieking Titan Head. This is 08 Elite Head at the beginning of the Hydra's end step. Each player discards a card, and when it leaves the battlefield, each player gains 4 life and draws a card. We'll each gain 4 life now and draw a card. So Fate and Fury will go up to 47. Power and Profit will go up to 27. And Armed and Dangerous will go up to 30. Fate and Fury draws the Cure's Follower, gains 2 more life to go up to 49. We reveal the next card, which is a Divination. Power and Profit draws the Murder's Cut and reveals the Forest. Armed and Dangerous draws a Cash Defenses. Power and Profit will play the Forest from their deck, giving them a life to go up to 28, revealing the Scuttling Doom Engine. And then we will spend one Swamp and exile four lands to cast Murderous Cut. This is an instant, it has Delve, and Destroy Target Creature will destroy the Shrieking Titan Head. 
The Shriek and Titan Head Dies will reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. There's a Hydra Head. Fade and Fury will play an island. We'll gain a life from that land to go up to 50. We'll spend three mana. Play a second Nyx Weaver. We'll spend three more mana to sacrifice this Nyx Weaver to bring the Necropolis Fiend back into our hand. The Nyx Weaver is actually exiled. Armed and Dangerous will play another Blossoming Sands, getting another life to go up to 31. We'll spend four mana to cast the Kytheon's Irregulars. This is a 4-3 Human Soldier with Renown 1, and you can pay white, white to tap a target creature. We'll go ahead and spend three more mana to play Cash Defenses. This is Sorcery, it says Bolster 3. Kytheon's Irregulars has the least amount of toughness, so it'll get three plus one plus one counters. Then we'll go to the Hydra's turn. The Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is a Spall the Hero Hole. Each player exiles a creature he or she controls until the Hydra's next turn when the Hydra leaves the battlefield, return exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. We'll go ahead and exile an Elvish Mystic for Fade and Fury. Power and Profit will exile the Nyx Weaver. Armed and Dangerous will exile the Siege Rhino. Fade and Fury will tap the Kara Metro's Acolyte for 7 green mana, and we will cast the Hydra Broodmaster. This is a 7-7 seven, seven Hydra with XX green monstrosity X. When it becomes monstrous, put X, XX green Hydra creature tokens onto the battlefield. We'll tap the other Kara Metro's Acolyte now for 9 green mana, and so we'll have 11 green mana left. We'll spend 2 blue mana and 3 of those 11 green mana to take us down to 8 green mana to play the Prognostic Sphinx. This is a 3-5 Sphinx with flying. You can discard a card to give it hexproof until end of turn and tap it. We'll spend 1 more blue mana plus the green mana to cast a Curator's Follower. This is a 2-2 Merfolk with tap, untap another target permanent. And then we'll spend the remaining mana to cast the Nessian Game Warden. It's a 4-5 Beast when it enters the battlefield. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of force you control. You may reveal a creature card from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Look at the top four cards. We have a Genesis Hydra, we'll put that onto the battlefield under our control, and we'll put the rest on the bottom of the library. Then we'll go to the end step, and each player will lose one life from the Hydra head. Fate and Fury will go down to 49, Power and Profit will go down to 47, Armed and Dangerous will go down to 30. We will not use the Harvester because we really don't need to at this point, we kind of have the game in check. We'll untap. Fade and Fury draws a forest, reveals a nemesis of mortals. Power and Profit draws a Scuttling Doom Engine, reveals a Brain Maggot. Armed and Dangerous draws a Citadel Siege. Fade and Fury gains two life from the card draw to go up to 51. Armed and Dangerous will spend four mana and cast Citadel Siege. This is an enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose cons or dragons. Cons at the beginning of combat on your turn put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, or dragons at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn tap target creature that player controls. Go ahead and put the counters on Dramoka, making it a 7 7. We'll go to combat and swing at the Hydra Head with Dramoka. That'll bolster two. That'll give the Seeker of the Way a couple more counters to make it a 6 6. This defeats the Hydra Head. We'll reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. There are no new heads, and so before anything else happens, the Clash Packs defeat the Hydra on normal difficulty. We'll be right back for sideboarding. Baden Fury will remove the Curse of the Swine, Hypnotic Siren, and Aether Spouts, and sideboard in three Nylea's Disciples. Power and Profit will remove two Brain Maggots, a Debilitating Injury, and a Sultai Charm, and sideboard in Reviving Melody, Grave Robber Spider, Baleful Eidolon, and Typhoid Rats. Armed and Dangerous will remove two Ultimate Price, two Pacifism, and a Feat of Resistance, and put in two Abzan Falconers, Abzan Battle Priest, Skill, Blessing, and Elite Skill Guard. Alright, we are back for Hard Mode with four Hydra Heads assembled. Go ahead and draw our opening hands. Fade and Fury draws a Voyaging Satyr, Forest, Forest, Prophet of Crufix, Hydra Broodmaster, Forest, and Nessian Game Warden. It's not a great start, but I guess we can lean on the Voyaging Satyrs to hopefully get us to playing these bigger cards faster. 
Power and Profit draws a Forest, Murder's Cut, Scuttling Doom Engine, Baleful Eidolon, Nyx Weaver, Herald of Torment, and Nemesis of Mortals. We can't keep a one lander so we'll use our free Mulligan. Power and Profit draws a Reaper of the Wild, Sultai Ascendancy, Corsair of Crufix, Doomwake Giant, Evolving Wilds, Night Hauler, and Sultai Soothsayer. Again, we can't keep a one lander so we're going to Mulligan down to six. Now we have a Nyx Weaver, Opulent Palace, Satyr Wayfinder, Forest, Grave Robber Spider, Swamp, and Commune of the Gods. I think that this is an acceptable first hand. And we will take the Commune of the Gods and put it on the bottom. Our Nature draws an Elite Scale Guard, Swamp, Forest, Jungle Hollow, Abzan Falconer, Citadel Siege, and Outland Colossus. I would normally keep a hand with this distribution of lands and spells, but since we can't cast any of the white cards because we lack white mana and those are the majority of our spells, we're going to use our free mulligan. Now we draw a Forest, Top and Free Blade, Siege Rhino, Incremental Growth, Abs and Battle Beast, Abs and Ascendancy, and Dromoko the Eternal. We can't keep a one lander, so we're going to mulligan down to six. Our Nages draws Blossoming Sands, Light Walker, Incremental Growth, Plains, Dragon Hunter, Scale Blessing, and Abzan Ascendancy. I think that this is an acceptable first hand, and we will take the Abzan Ascendancy and put it on the bottom. Fade Fury draws an Island. Power and Profit draws Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws Jungle Hollow. Fade Fury will play a Forest. Power and Profit will play the Opulent Palace, tapped. Armed and Dangerous will play the Blossoming Sands, tapped. We get a life to go up to 21. We'll pass to the Hydra. The Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is a Distract the Hydra. Nobody can sacrifice a creature, so we're going to take three additional life loss in addition to the four damage to take seven each to go down to 13 for Fate and Fury, 13 for Power and Profit, and 14 for Armed and Dangerous. Then we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws a forest and we'll discard a forest. Power and Profit draws a Nemesis of Mortals, and we will discard a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws a Cash Defenses, and we will discard the Scale Blessing. We'll untap. Fade and Fury draws a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Power and Profit draws an Island. Fade and Fury draws an Elite Scale Guard. Fade and Fury will play the Island. We'll tap these two to cast a Voyaging Satyr. This is a 1-2 Satyr Druid with tap on tap target land. Power and Profit plays a Forest. We'll tap these two to cast a Satyr Wayfinder. This is a 1 1 Satyr. When it ends the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them into your hand and put the rest into your graveyard. We reveal a Community God, Typhoid Rats, Evolving Wilds, and Swamp. We'll go ahead and put the Swamp in our hand and put the rest in the graveyard. Armed and Dangerous, we'll play the Jungle Hollow. We gain a life to go back up to 15. Tap this to play a Dragon Hunter. This is a 2-1 Human Warrior with protection from dragons, and Dragon Hunter can block dragons as though it had reach. We'll trap the Warrior to give all three creatures haste. Set our Wayfinder will attack a head. The Dragon War Hunter will hit the same head. This head dies. We'll reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. There are no new heads. We'll each gain two life to go up to 15 for Fate and Fury and Power and Profit, and Armed Dangerous will go up to 17. Then we'll pass to the... Hydra, the Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is a Disorienting Glower. We can't cast spells until our next turn. We'll each take three damage to go down to 13, 13, and 15. At the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fade and Fury draws an island, and we'll discard a Forest. Power and Profit draws a Herald of Torment, and we'll discard a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws a Blossoming Sands, and we will discard the Cached Defenses. We'll untap. Fade and Fury draws a forest. Power and Profit draws an island. Armed and Dangerous draws a Scoured Barons. We'll go to combat and attack one Hydra Head with the Satyr Wayfinder and the Dragon Hunter. The Hydra Head dies. We'll gain two life apiece and reveal two cards to see if there are any new heads. There's one new Hydra Head. This will take the decks up to 15, 15, and 17. Fade and Fury will play a forest. Power and Profit will play a swamp. Armed and Dangerous will play the Blossoming Sands. We'll gain a life to go up to 18. Since we can't cast anything, we'll pass to the Hydra. The Hydra will cast the topmost card, which is a Hydra's Impenetrable Hide. We'll take three damage apiece to go down to 12, 12, and 15. We'll use Harvester. 
Fate and Fury draws a forest and we will discard the forest. Power and Profit draws a forest and we'll discard the island. Armed and Dangerous draws a swamp. We'll discard the swamp. We'll untap. Fade and Fury draws a Corsair of Crucifix. Power and Profit draws a Font of Fertility. Armed and Dangerous draws a Plains. Fate and Fury will tap out. We'll cast the Corsair of Crucifix. We'll reveal the top card, which is a forest. We'll play the forest to gain a life to go back up to 13. Power and Profit will play the island. We'll spend four mana to cast the Grave Robber or Spider. This is a 2-4 spider with reach, and you can pay three and a black to give it plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures in your graveyard. You can activate this ability only once each turn. There's only one creature in the graveyard at the moment. Armed and Dangerous will play the Scoured Barons. We'll gain a life to go up to 16. We'll tap two mana to cast the Light Walker. This is a 2-1 Human Warrior, and it has flying as long as it has a plus one, plus one counter on it. Unable to defeat any heads this turn, we'll pass to the Hydra. The Impenetrable Hide wears off, and we'll cast the topmost card, which is Follow the Hero Hole. Fade and Fury will exile the Voyaging Satyr. Power and Prophet will exile the Satyr Wayfinder. Armed and Dangerous will exile the Dragon Hunter. We'll take three damage each to go down to 10, 9, and 13. Then at the end of the turn, we'll use the Harvester. Fate and Fury draws a Divination, and we'll discard the Divination. Power and Profit draws a Merciless Executioner, and we'll discard the Merciless Executioner. Armed and Dangerous draws a Lightwalker, we'll discard a Plains. We'll untap. Fate and Fury draws a Temple of Mystery, and we'll reveal a Karametra's Acolyte. Power and Profit draws a Swamp. Armed and Dangerous draws a Swamp. Fate and Fury will play the Island. We'll tap 5 mana and cast the Prophet of Crucifix. Power and Prophet will play a Forest. We'll tap 3 mana to cast a Nyx Weaver. And then we'll tap another mana to cast a Font of Fertility. Armed and Dangerous will play the Plains. We'll tap out and cast an Elite Scale Guard. This is a 2-3 Human Soldier when it enters the battlefield. Bolster 2. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it attacks, tap target creature, defending player controls. We'll go ahead and put the two counters on the light walker. We'll tap the word to give every creature haste. We'll swing at one of the Hydra heads with the Corsair of Crucifix. The Nyx Weaver will join in that attack. Grave Robber Spider will attack into another Hydra head. The Elite Scale Guard will join in that attack. The light walker will attack the last Hydra head and tap it. The Hydra Head taps, but then all of the heads will die. We'll reveal six cards to see if there are any new heads. And there are no new heads. And so, before the Hydra was able to get started, the Clash Packs defeat the Hydra on hard mode, much easier than they took down the Hydra on normal difficulty. Let me know what you thought about the games in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can hit subscribe. This was Refresh. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.